Hello everyone! Last time we devoted an entire video explaining the motivation of Sylvanus and lying with the Jailer. Time to move on, time to move forward and head on into the Shadowlands. Navanos had failed in his mission of taking care of Monsamdi, which didn't exactly please his Dark Lady. This was a blow, but once she felt sure that it could overcome, Sylvanus flicked her fingers as if ridding herself of a speck of muck. While she embraced the darkness, Nefanos returned to the Meristet with her expectations of him finding a way to prevent the Loa's meddling. This would in fact be the last time that they saw each other. As the world went on a hunt for the Dark Lady, the pressure was on to bring her to justice, pushing some to the brink, like her sister Illyria with her husband Trevelyan. He chained down innocence with the light, while she used the void to invade their minds and find some answers, but none hunted with as much passion as hatred as Tyrande Whisperwinds. The Banshee Queen had burned down Teldrassil. The genocide of the Night Elves doomed so many spirits to the torment of the Maw. Infused with the powers of the Night Warrior, a loon's dark gift, Tyrande finds the champion of the Banshee Queen and has only one question. Where is she? With him, of course. In the darkest place. Along with every soul burned to ash in your precious tree. <laughs> Where is she? <laughs> Go on. Kill me. You'll send me right to my lady. Beyond the veil, she shattered. <laughs> oh, Tyrande. Hi. Priestess, Night Warrior, completely powerless to stop the coming. She awaits within the Shadowlands, and not just the Banshee Queen, but so do Jaina, Fro, Bane and Anduin, who've been taken by a Valkyr. They also try to take Tyrande, but the Night Warrior is no easy prey to capture. They've been selected by Sylvanas in order of the Jailer, as he's in need of a great but humble soul, one who served truly, selflessly from the heart, who put duty to others before anything else. He had a special task in mind for this soul, and to find out who was worthy they enjoyed the torment of the Maw. Heroes of Azeroth were eventually called to come to the top of Icecrown and travel through the Vale into Hell itself to find our stolen heroes. Despite protests, Toronto went in as well, as nothing would stop her from completing her hunt. Won't succeed. Such a narrow vision. You disappoint me. No matter. We will find what we seek. In a night. Anduin! How badly are you hurt? I will live. Finding a way through the Jailer's forces, we actually did manage to find our stolen heroes, but getting them out of the Maw, the domain for which nothing is supposed to escape, it proved rather difficult. The light is with me. Even here. Go, champion! Go! Win apparently shows the Jailer that he's the right candidate, the one that he's been looking for. And while we came here for a rescue mission, we barely managed to escape ourselves. We can't get them out quite yet, so we focused our efforts on the Shadowlands. All of it was in trouble, due to the actions of the Jailer, and by extension Sylvanas herself. In Ordebos, we learned about the Arbiter shutting down, souls directly dropping into the Maw. We traveled through the different zones of Bastion, Meldrexus, Ardenweald and Revendrev. We learned more about how the Shadowlands operates, the problems that they were facing, met the leaders, made new allies, took care of threats, until at last we returned to Hell as Maulwalkers, 
taking on the jailer's forces and fighting away to his base of operations, the Tower of Torgas. My own! Do you hear me? Whoever you are, whatever you want, I will fight you! You will not break me! We have managed to save Bane, Jaina and Fro, but young Anduin was still nowhere to be found. Is we now possess the necessary instrument, we must begin its preparation. Leave him to me. You've seen what he is capable of when he believes in the cause. A measure of patience may yield superior results. Very well. We have our weapon. There was more to it for Sylvanas than just turning Anduin into a more powerful and capable ally. To her, as much as she liked to deny it, it was personal. It's during his imprisonment here that the story we talked about last time, the story within the Sylvanas novel, is explained. It's the Dark Lady telling Anduin her life story, trying to convince him of the clear truth that the Jailer had told her, for if she could make Anduin see it their way, have him willingly join their side, that in turn would make her choices right as well. And on top of that, she saw in Anduin her little brother Lirov. Down to the nicknames that she used, Lirov was a little lord's son. Anduin she called Little Lion, but the boy king would not serve. Look around you! At what and who you've joined! What makes you believe you're not just a weapon to achieve his ends? You have a choice to consider. Join us willingly, or be made to serve. I thought you believed in free will, Sylvanas. We've never had free will, little lion. But that is about to change. Let me go, he told her. We can leave this place, and I will help you. Your goal is worthy, but not the way the Jailer intends to achieve it. Never like that. Something inside her shattered. You are a fool, Anduin Rin, and you have made one of me as well. Have you been angling to get my sympathy this entire time? To trick me into releasing you? To make me think that I have lost my perspective? That I would turn on the Jailer just because your face resembles someone I once loved? She shook her head angrily. I am done. She said, I am done with all of this. I leave you to your fate, Anduin. Fury made her tremble, and Fury gave her speed as she stalked out. He called after her, but she did not halt, did not look back. If she did, she was afraid that everything she was would come apart. Ah, there she is again. You know, these endless lectures of yours have failed to convince you. Regardless... The conversation is over. One way or another, we will have you. So I will offer this one last time. Join our cause, or be made to serve. What kind of choice is that? Why even give me? It's the choice you never had. Despite all your grand designs, there's still some shred of your mortality haunting you. As if the Banshee Queen hasn't entirely eclipsed the Ranger General. Don't. Now I understand why you brought me here. Why you've tried so hard to persuade me. Because if you can get me to let go of hope, you finally can too. Enough! Submit! You are only making this harder on yourself. Not harder on me. Right now, you hold all the power. How will you use it? I've not come this far to falter now. Then why do you hesitate? 
Make your choice. Sylvanas Windrunner. And so Sylvanas made her choice, stayed the course, and used the recently forged King's Morn, Shalemain, turned into a Mornblade, infused what remained of Arce's soul, and she forced the same fate upon Enduin as Arce had done to her. Sylvanas stole his free will, and the Jailer had his dominated weapon. The reason why he was so keen on a soul like this one, it was so that they could infiltrate the domain of Bastion. Despite them knowing that Enduin had been captured in the Maw, and despite we ourselves have approval worth the Archon in order to get an audience, Enduin is accepted based on reputation alone, and they welcome him in, giving him, or more accurately put, giving the Jailer the opportunity to strike the leader of Bastion and steal her sigil. He will need all five to gain access to Zer of Mortis, to get into the Sepulchre and fulfill his ultimate plan of rewriting the universe. We can see here that Enduin is not entirely gone. The act of stabbing the Archon is so against his own nature that just for a moment he regains control, experiences the full horror that's going on before the Jailer tightens his leash again. The vessel performed its part flawlessly. Three keys remain. Then they will see death was never meant to be changed. A flicker of doubt crosses Sylvanas' face as she looks at what she's done. Someone who in her mind and heart reminded her so much of her beloved brother turned into what Arf is made of her. She had become the thing that she had fought against. But all for the greater good, right? That's what the Jailer had told her after all. But he also told her how much he valued her as an ally. And seeing how he treats his other allies. Sire Denathrius has been taken prisoner. What is our plan to recover him? Every soul has its purpose. Denathrius has fulfilled his. Does not exactly inspire confidence. This was when they were still forging Kingsmorn and made ready to force Enduin into servitude. Another blow in her conviction that would come as their quest for the sigils would lead them into Arden Wields, where Tron the Whisperwind, after who knows how long of soloing the Shadowlands, finally finishes her hunt. Tyrande, I understand you've been looking for me. Come then, show me Elune's wrath. Elune gave me her strength. The wrath. Is mine alone? Night warrior, I expected more. I will take your head, Banshee! Just like I took his! The Thonos. You didn't know. Your master is keeping secrets from you! Sylvanas taunts Tyrande like Nefanos had done, but the champion of the Banshee Queen was wrong. 
death did not send him directly to his beloved. Perhaps the Valkyr have been so busy that they haven't gotten around to picking up his soul yet. We as players helped gather the soul of Ben, after all, so it's not like they all instantly fly you into the Shadowlands. More likely though, his soul did arrive in the Maw, and the Jailer not only kept his death a secret, he also kept his soul away. For what reason or purpose, we may never know for sure. As even to this day, Nafanos is still missing, and we never saw her confront the jailer about learning about this, learning about Nafanos. Now I would imagine that he kept the soul in reserve, in case that she needed some extra motivation, or perhaps he wanted to make sure that Nafanos would not whisper in her ear, would not push her away from this path. Who knows what Zafal was thinking? The end result is all the same. His loyal ally now knows that he's been keeping secrets from her. She survives this encounter, as Tyrannus Night Warrior powers run out at the most unfortunate of times. Survives to stay at Zoval's side, as they make ready to claim the final sigil and get everything that they've been working for. The battle is almost upon us. I will deal with the invading forces atop Torghast. When we reach Oribus, you will defend Zoval while he completes the ritual. You mean he will compel me to defend him? Each time he dominates my will, I feel myself slipping further away. Is this what you felt when Arthas raised you, Sylvanas? Hollow, empty, everything you once were, consumed by darkness. Yes, young man. But in the end, the sacrifices we've made will have been worth it. Once the cycle of life and death has been broken and remade, we will- By that time, I'll have been lost. And so will you. I only hope my friends will remember me as I was. Not what you made me to be. Bolvar leads the heroes of Azeroth through the Sanctum of Domination, the Jailer's home base, in which he's expanding his reach all the way to Orbos, where the Arbiter and the final sigil awaits. The road there had us face off against some of his most powerful forces, like the Nine Valkyr, the Warrior Maidens that had entered the Bark of his Sylvanas, allowed her to resurrect more Forsaken and stayed out of Hell by taking her place instead. Valkyr, you are bound to me. Strike down my foes. As you command, Dark Lady. The Dungeon Journal claims that the Dark Pact Sylvanas struck with Valkyr forged her bond with the Jailer, from which, at first read, it would give the impression that it was her acceptance of the Valkyr that got her out of Hell, the origin story of Edge of Night, that that was the thing that bound her to the Jailer. With the Sylvanas novel, we now know that she made the choice willingly, she willingly sided with him as she became the War Chief. But still, the Valkyr definitely played a part in forging her bond, as they were the ones who showed it around the Shadowlands. Speaking of bargains, the one mentioned between Sylvanas and Helia during Legion, that was also orchestrated by the Jailer. Helia was his ally after all, and told Sylvanas to pick up the artifact from her, to pick up the Soul Cage. Helia was reluctant to part with it, but I pointed out that it would benefit her as much as it would benefit him. I was instructed to use it to command the leader of the Valkyr to deliver the mighty souls she commands to Helia, who in turn would turn them into our purpose. So Helia had given her the cage so that Sylvanas could deliver her the power of the Valkyr, which Helia could turn into more forces for the Jailer. That was the deal, would Gen Greymane not have put a stop to it? You stole my son's future. Now I'm stealing yours, he had told her. But if anyone's future had been stolen, it had been dead of Gen himself. Who knew where the Arbiter had sent his son Liam? Who knew where it would send Gen, or indeed any of his family? The possibilities were quite literally limitless. But the chance of them all being together, according to the Valkyr, there was no chance at all. Fool, she whispered. Old sad fool. We will reshape it all. Azeroth's champions. You've arrived at last. Despite witnessing the broken cycle of life and death with your own eyes, still, you would stop us from remaking this flawed system. What a pity. 
There are no more Valkyr to protect you, Sylvanas. You will die here for the last time. The Archer does not mourn the loss of their arrows, High Lord. A shame you won't survive to witness our victory. But if it's an ending you seek, then come and meet it. The arrow line is a repeat of our mindset towards the Forsaken, as we read it within Edge of Night. They turn from arrows in her quiver to a bulwark against the infinite. Now the warrior maidens, who had forged the pack with her, took her place in hell, allowed her to fight for eternity salvation. Get the same description. Your efforts are futile. Ouroboros is within my grasp. No! We will stop you! Jaina, we need a portal! The Jaina must not take the Eternal City! Sylvanas has become quite powerful through her Jailer Covenant, capable of putting up a fight against several heroes of Azeroth and her own might included. The ability to fly is quite overpowered here, as we need to be more careful with our footing. Jaina and Thrall build bridges across the chains, while we chase down the Banshee Queen, and we try to stop the Jailer from reaching Ouroboros. We're done with your games, so You will pay! All of you will pay! You don't have to do this! Surrender! Suffer my wrath! For Sourfang! For the Horde! This time you'll lose, Sylvanas. All hope is lost. Sylvanas! Give Anduin to me! Hear the sound of suffering! Hold them back a little longer. The portal's nearly open. It's done! Hurry! No! The Jailer is going to destroy the Arbiter! Quickly, champions! Stop Sylvanas! Death bends to my will! Enduin is keeping her allies busy in the middle, so now we face the Banshee Queen all by ourselves. The clock is running out though, and despite our best efforts, the Jailer succeeds in taking back what was stolen from him. He's done it. The Arbiter falls.
shall not let him reach me. The way to Seraph Mortis, the sepulchre, and the power to rewrite the universe is open to Sylvanus. While well, Sylvanus has a sword he stores. They've added the ability to Mourn Blades that, when wielded with rage, it has a chance to shatter a soul into fragments. Now the question, did the Jailer use her soul piece to drag her into the mall to begin with? That's still up in the air. If he was able to do this with her, what does this say about the Kyrian who ferry souls and the judgment of the Arbiter? And if he was able to drag her into the mall, why not Arthas? Picking up Frostmourne also took a piece of his soul away, why was Ufa required to throw Arthas in there? But on the other hand, if he didn't drag her in there, if he didn't manipulate these events, which I personally do think they are going with with the story, as in, we are going to replace this unfair judgment system of the Shadowlands with a much better one, but if she was judged by the Arbiter and then found worthy to go to the Maw, then I do wonder why she was sent to the Maw, whereas others, like a Lady Vush or a Kilfus or a Garrosh, why they did not, why they got to spend their time in Revendreth. That doesn't seem fair. Questions left behind in the Shadowlands. For now, we are left with a Jailer who has full access to Xerath Mortis. King Anduin is still his dominated puppet, and Sylvanas Windrunner is stuck in a nightmare of her own making. We are going to need a back though if we want to have any hope of saving the day. But that will be a story for next time. So for now, thank you very much for watching everyone. Subscribe if you like my videos. And until next time. See ya!